T to L1 to the sacrum. So you go, um, you want L, you want the movement of L1 through L5, right? So T12 is going to stay stationary, and sacrum is going to stay stationary. So all you want to know is the difference. Your sacrum is going to move a little, and of course your thoracic is going to move. But all you want to know is the difference between those two, and that'll tell you what is your lumbar. Does that make sense? Okay, so when I do this one, I have to get low. Finding L5 is your first, well, finding the PSIS is your first step. So the PSIS are going to be about the same level as the ASIS. So ASIS are a little easier to find. So you can find that first, come straight back, and then try to find those bony prominences of the PSIS. If you come straight in from that, that is L5S1 right there. And if you do a thumbs width up, it's not going to stay. Just hold. There we go. Perfect. Put your arms down right there. Okay. So PSIS, L5S1. So L5, 4, 3, 2, 1. You just go one thumb width. Now, if you have huge thumbs, you might not have to go quite as far, right? But generally, a thumb's width is going to take you to L1, and so T12 is going to be just above that. So right on T12 is fine as process, where you put your first inclinometer and you zero it out. Second one's going to go on the sacrum. So we know where L5, S1 is. So the sacrum is going to be right here. Everybody's giggling because they're like, oh my god, you need to get butt. <laughs> <laughs> you have to do it to each other. Sacrum's right there, and we're not like down that far, okay? We're just on the sacrum, right? Sacrum's up here. I'm not in the danger area. <laughs> <laughs> All right? That's why it's good to know your landmarks because you don't want to accidentally <laughs> put this in the wrong place, right? Too bad. Okay, hey, can everybody that's on this side see that these are at zero? Yes. You see how I zeroed them because I can move this to zero? Okay, now just bend forward for me, Trey, as far as you can. If you're... Yeah, sure, if you can. Okay. Yeah, got a lot of flexibility. Okay, <laughs> now, stay there. This one says 125. This one says 55. 125 minus 55 is 70. He has 70 degrees of motion. See how that works? Oh. Yeah, do math. Math is, math is everywhere. Okay, let's do extension. I usually let the patient put their hands on their hips if they like, just because sometimes they feel like they're gonna fall backwards when they can't put their hands on their hips. So don't go anywhere yet. Zeroing it out. Then I want you to just go back into extension. He is really hyper. Okay, <laughs> so he was at 60 here, 20 here, so 40. Trey's got a lot of motion in his spine. Should have been that. Yeah, Jim could have.